You're listening to the Rack and Run Table podcast, episode number 68. I'm your host, David Ori. I'm here with my co-host. Chris Agana, and our guest today was Dr. Lilian Vilgaraza. She is the chair of the Philippine Studies Department at the City College of San Francisco. She's also the National Scholar and Trustee for the Filipino American National Historical Society, and so many other things. She's legit a pioneer, you know, a ceiling breaker. She is everything that we want on this show, man. Like, oh, my oh my gosh. Go ahead, dude. <laughs> She's amazing. <laughs> She's amazing. Oh, dude, is. Now, this is such a great conversation, man. It's like, honestly, man, I felt like it just drawing back to like all these things that I felt like during my childhood, even more so even during like my college years, just like really just discovering like who, who I was. Um, and she like touched on so many of that. So what about for you? Oh, yeah, man. I mean, like, I want to have a conversation with her just of like what it means to be Filipino American and yeah. also like what the Philippines and the Philippine history should mean to us and why we should learn more about it and how that impacts us. You know what I mean? Just as the conversation go, kept going, I, I don't want to be respectful for her time. I want to keep asking her I questions, know. you know, and, it, and I hope you guys, as she says, get some curiosity out of this, get some kind of aha moment, something that makes you want to learn more and Google. She name drops so many people, so many books, so many events in the Philippine American and also Philippine history that, I mean, if you don't search something after this, then what the heck, man? <laughs> what the, what even like? <laughs> I enjoy this one, man. <laughs> Um, I'm I'm just super excited for this this conversation we're about to have. Like, not gonna lie. Um, and then and, you know, I wanna we always, like we always say like at the beginning of every podcast, we always got to set the table. We always got to make sure everything's you know finally set. So I'm actually gonna have our our awesome guest today, um, you know, kind of set the table for us. So give us, especially for our listeners, you know, our <laughs> listeners that are that are out there, um, tell them who you are, um, what you do, where you're from, and um, and what kind of divulge a little bit of, of your story um, as we go along too. So, um, hi everybody. My name is Dr. Lillian Bolo Villaraza. If I extend that, Villaraza Ifrun. That's for, that's for my husband. Um, <laughs> um, I am the chair of the Philippine Studies Department at City College of San Francisco. Um, it is the only Philippine Studies Department in the nation. Um, Let's see what else. I'm also a national trustee and scholar of the Filipino American National Historical Society. Um, I'm second oh, generation man. Filipino American, um, born in Oakland, raised in San Diego, military brat. Um, and yeah, I went to school for a really long time. And I know a lot of stuff about Philippines, <laughs> and, Philippines and Filipino Americans. <laughs> <laughs> That was perfect. I, I guess you're you're the goat, right? You're the greatest of all time. Of this. I was, I was like, <laughs> Can we just say you're the goat? I mean, <laughs> no, I, I'm very far from the goat. <laughs> oh my god, that's amazing. I mean, I know that's a very like high level, like surface level of your background, but let's. I yeah. guess you could tell a little bit more of your, of your background and the story of how you got where you are now. I mean, it's yeah. a good journey. So I know that mm -hmm. you know you lived throughout California, you went to Illinois. So if you want to go ahead and give a little more detail, sure, sure. So, um, you know, I for those who remember way back when <laughs> in, in California public school education, right? The, the whole gate system, gift and talented education, right? Um, my parents are were working or are working class um, Filipino American immigrants. My dad was in the Navy. My mom worked in manufacturing. She um, she used to do medical supplies, and then she did cellular phones um, and things like that. But um, you know, her our, all of our kid, all of her kids were like, oh, they're smart. Let's send them to you know a more, a more well resourced, family white area of San Diego because the schools around you you know, aren't well resourced, right? So you take that test in like second grade and then they bust you off, you know, halfway across town to Point Loma um, mm. in third grade. Mm. Um, and so I was, you know, five, you know, you're an eight year old getting up at 5 a.m. to get on a bus, not happy, right? Um, so in, in middle school, after all of that, I, I figured out a way to come back to the community and to my neighborhood. So I didn't have to get up at 5 a.m. And the only way I was able to do that was um, to say that I wanted to take Tagalog. And they were oh. just opening up Tagalog classes at Bell Junior High. Um, and 
that was after several years of um, Filipino American students and Filipino teachers in San, uh, in San Diego Unified lobbying the district to mm -hmm. offer Tagalog classes. And um, so Ginang Evangeline Lopez de Lute was my, my, um, my Tagalog teacher. Um, may she rest in peace. And she was phenomenal. She, <laughs> she, she would come to school like, and, and we're like 13, 14, right? She'd come to school in pigtails. And then like, <laughs> you know, that was the time nice. of like, you know, the, the, the overalls, the short overalls. Mm. Right? Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, with, with one thing off, cause you know, boys <laughs> to men, she was phenomenal, you wow. know? And she, you know, she let us hang out in her room for lunch. And, um, you know, I didn't know anybody. Um, and I really kind of latched onto her and she gave me so many opportunities to kind of grow in, you know, leadership and things like that. And then I left and went to Morse High School. Um, same thing with Ginang Sally Idos. Um, she's lovely and wonderful and beautiful and I miss her and she's still in San Diego. Um, and if it weren't for those two women particularly, right? Um, I don't think the journey that I've been on would have been catalyzed. And since then it was, there were moments where like at every single juncture that was important. Somebody kind of was like, oh, you should be doing this. Oh, you should be doing this, right? And I mean, in, in undergraduate, um, my undergraduate um, programs, um, my, my mentor, Dr. Damon Woods from UCLA, um, he was at Irvine for a minute and he was teaching Philippine history and Philippine radical traditions. And I was mm -hmm. like, this is cool. <laughs> like, okay, <laughs> all right. There's stuff that I'm interested in. And I ended up becoming a history major. And I was talking to him one day and I'm just like, yeah, I think I want to go to grad school. I think I want to get my PhD. I don't know what to do. He's like, well, maybe you should think about doing this. And it was looking at theater as it was a vehicle to articulate nationalism um, during the early colonial period of um, in the 20th century. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> I'll do that. Uh, and you know, I didn't go to grad school until 18 years after that conversation. Mm -hmm. And, and that's what I ended up doing. Um, oh. You know, and in between all of that, just kind of community organizing as a spoken word artist for a while. <laughs> I was like, you know, all the things that you do when you're like 20 and 20 plus and trying to figure out your life and, <laughs> and who you are. Right. And, and um, things like that. So I'm, I'm grateful for, for those moments. And really it was, it's always, I always come back to that, that question of how do we understand who we are and our place here in the United States and expanding that, our relationship to the Philippines, you know, because mm -hmm. there are many of us who've gone the route of studying Filipino American history, which, and there are wonderful people, and I'm going to share something with you later because I'm super excited about it, <laughs> but um, I'm a Philippine historian. Right. And, mm -hmm. and there, there's there is a di distinction. There is a mm -hmm. distinction. Um, but I'm one of the fortunate ones, I would I would argue, who um, who draws from their Filipino American experience to really try to help other people <laughs> figure out what the Philippines means for them and mm -hmm. coming from that same kind of um, perspective. So. Wow, yeah. no, that, that's, that's that's super cool. No, that's 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 super inspiring. I mean, and I, and I know we want to give you time to sh time to share, but I, I wanted to just kind of like reel, reel it back just a little bit, just because um on this platform we honestly we talk so much about like discovering ourselves, discovering like who we are, and and a lot of just um self reflection to in order to to discover that. Um, is is this like like you talked a lot about the journey too? Um, when when did this when along your journey did you discover I guess or, or realize that like all right this is this is what's gonna this is where it is you know this is this is where I belong you know and I feel like a lot of us are always um you know we preach this and, and we talk about it like we're always searching for that yeah. um and um you know now you you, you sit as the chair as the uh, chair of the only academic department of the Philippine studies in the United States that is huge mm -hmm. you know and I, I really wanted to reiterate that and um but like when along that journey that you just described to us were you like all right this is it I am one of, uh, and this sounds super arrogant, and I apologize <laughs> if it does actually. I was one of the fortunate ones um, along that path where I knew I'd be in education in some capacity, mm -hmm. right? And 
the the whole thing about wrapping around Filipino identity, Philippine history, Filipino American experience, all of those things. It was all those little things. It's like I was drawn back to my community by Tagalog classes. I was engaged in the community because of all of the people I, I met in um, in San Diego as a student organizer and then as a community organizer. Um, you know, I, I, I did things to, you know, to, to really kind of uplift the, the demand for the Filipino language um, at the state level. Like it's, there are all these different, and just talking to folks and talking to, to peers who are just like, I don't know what I'm doing. Mm. I don't, I don't understand who I am. And this, this whole thing mm. of, you know, yeah. being Filipino and why is it, you know, and I mean, you know, when the debut came out in the early 2000s. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Okay. <laughs> well, we like, went there. We went there. What? <laughs> But then there were all these, you know, there were all these other movies too, like mm -hmm. you know, the flip side by Rod Polito. Oh. I was like, what? And then there's there's a hip hop documentary, right, by Lacan De Leon and Don Balton. And I'm just like, what? And then seriously, that renaissance, that time in our lot and in, in history, it was so rich with people, you know, creating things. And I guess like if we use today's terms right content creators and mm -hmm. influencers and da -da -da. and it was so like it was so robust you know and i think there was no one moment for me mm -hmm. i was just blessed to be in a moment in history at a juncture in history where it was just inundating you you mm -hmm. know and it's just like oh i just heard one voice oh buffy's on the on, you know on on the radio you know Justin Enriquez oh my god you know and it's just like how could you not want to kind of dig a yeah. little deeper mm -hmm. and and try to figure you know figure that out a little bit more and what I love even more right now all that's coming circling back right because you yeah. see one voice you see drop in harmony you see you know Kai and all those folks coming back right oh, now oh. right and parents and folks who are our age introducing it to their kids their kids are like oh my god I'm so embarrassed <laughs> don't do that dance move what are you doing <laughs> you know, stop doing the running man I'm like yeah anyway uh -huh. so so I don't know if that that answers your question and and no, I, I forgot good. to say like being in Chicago, I think was really important for me too, because we live in a bubble in California, you know, mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. experiencing and understanding the Filipino American experience in the Midwest yeah. was really important to me. And I, I love Chicago, you know, I love, um, I love the family that I made. Uh, there are the folks who I, who are family to me now. Um, shout out Christine Jacob. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, 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 um, you know, those perspectives for somebody who's coming from California were mind blowing. Cause it's just like, mm -hmm. oh, there are Filipinos outside of California. Mm -hmm. hey, kind, 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 kind of go on that a little bit, just because yeah. I, I think, I don't think a lot of people understand that, you know, and, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, go on that a little bit. Like what were some like high level, high level differences that kind of maybe shocked you, culture shocked you a little bit. Yeah. Well, I, I think, part of it is that we have so many resources in California. Yeah. Um, we have so many um, folks who are doing different things, but I also recognize in, in Chicago, there are people who've been doing things since the fifties, since the forties. And, you know, that you have the Rizal Center, you know, and, and you have people who have been um, documenting Filipino American history in, in the Midwest, Dr. Barbara Posadas, you know, who was, who was my mentor and, and was part of um, the history department at Northern Illinois University where I went, like her, her work was groundbreaking in understanding the Filipino experience in, in the Midwest and who was going there, right? Whether it was, um, you know, men who were, who were working the railroads, right? Or it was, you know, medical professionals who were being recruited after 1965 like this is this is what that looked like and i'm just like that is fascinating yeah you know but yeah that's that's <laughs> awesome my chicago folks <laughs> yeah and you saying all these different like historical things you're shouting out all these people that have you cross paths with i mean for me i will admit that 
I I don't know who these people are. You know what I mean? But you yeah. hearing these names from you makes me want to, I'm going to Google these people. After yeah. This conversation. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? And yeah. I think you, you brought up like what kind of got you intrigued and pulled in to learn more about this also is because your peers were like, I don't know what, you know, who I am as a Filipino American. And I have felt that before. And I'm mm-hmm. just now getting more wanting to learn more about our history and know about more about our people. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, what, how do you get people interested? Cause obviously you said the resources are there, right? Even here in mm-hmm. California, the resources are everywhere, yeah. but someone has to take the initiative to look for it. Right. Cause maybe, um, there's not enough public explorers just yet, but someone has to take initiative. So what, what, are, or what should we find ourselves to, to look for it? You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, <laughs> if this was, if this was a, a conversation that we were having 20 years ago, I'd be like, go to the library. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? <laughs> <laughs> I love Oops. the library. Can I just, <laughs> and it's, and it, it's funny because like, it wasn't, me kind of catalyzing conversations with folks. It was being in dialogue with people who are wrestling with who mm-hmm. they are and what yeah. they understood, yeah. right? Yeah. And I, mm-hmm. I think for me, like, you know, I, I have a love-hate relationship with social media just because I, I've, I've, I've met my threshold with Instagram <laughs> and I'm still <laughs> trying to understand it. <laughs> I have no problem with me that my students laugh at me all the time they're just like professor it's not that hard I'm like you know what my brain it just stops I'm sorry but you know I I've heard that there's a whole lot of folks who are doing really great things on on TikTok right um you know folks who are doing stuff on uh, Kirby Arroyo is doing some really great material on YouTube um and you know I, I really admire what he's doing um you know the face for those who are older, right? <laughs> oh, man. Facebook, Facebook is a very good one too. Right? Oh, <laughs> and, and, and that's where I, like, I largely live. I'm sorry. Sorry, not sorry, you know, because that's in, in terms of generation wise, that's where a lot of my peers are too. And, you know, it's, it's um, you know, kind of thinking about it in those ways, but, but also just kind of like, if we're talking about spaces, right, I, I have so much mad respect for the folks who are doing undiscovered in san francisco right now mm. and and um the spaces that they've developed you know desi daganan and gina rosales is just it's because it's not just a one-off right this is the thing like i've what i've observed over the years is how do you go from doing a one-off to creating something sustainable Mm-hmm. Right. So I think about FPAC in Los Angeles, mm-hmm. you know, and I, I, I yeah. think about, um, you know, now I, I think about Undiscovered. I think about Pistahan in, in, in um, San Francisco as well. Um, and I, I think about, you know, other spaces where people gather and this is kind of their moment to to kind of soak all of this stuff in. And I, I, I find that folks are being more or I would like to believe. Right. The folks are being more intentional about making those spaces a place where you can soak up different things every single time that you go. Right. Mm. There's some amazing stuff happening in Toronto right now. Um, and I'm just like, oh, I need to go to Canada because <laughs> Filipino Canadian studies is a thing. Oh, my God. Nice. Just, uh, those, those folks are, are just they're figuring stuff out they're they're you know they're digging into their histories and and their communities and just like oh man cool good stuff good stuff that's so cool but but yeah so i i think about that i do think about that um because i think for for filipinos one of the things that i do know is that um until recently right we are not a community that has been beholden to particular spaces, right? Mm. Filipino towns disappear, right? From yeah. the early 20th century, a lot of them have disappeared. And it's only been in the last 20 years or so where there is intentional marking of spaces like historic Filipino town in, mm. in Los Angeles, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Um, but I also think of, like in Chicago, again, sorry. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, the, the, the seafood city and the Jollibee, <laughs> I'm just like, oh, they put a marker. That is a marker right there, right? And um, you know, I I think about how there. Um, my one of my friends who passed a couple years ago. He um, he is one of the avenues up there is um, honorary um Ron Salazar way or something like that. And I'm just like, 
we're marking space. And I think yeah. that's really important because it shows that we're here, right? Mm -hmm. When the 54 <laughs> in San Diego was named, you know, Ilion Veracruz mm -hmm. uh, Highway. And then, you know, when I think about Little Manila that was just recognized in, um, in New York, right? I was just like, oh. Wow, I didn't even know that, wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it, and it's it's those things, it's those those little not little things because they're not little, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Where we're able to point to a space and say, "We are here, mm -hmm. we are here," and you're not gonna get rid of us. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Commence the murals, right? So yeah, yeah. wow. But, I mean, when okay, you talked a little bit earlier about like people's like you were you were in dialogue and 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 with people and their journey to discovering like their roots right and i just kind of want to because because like you know kind of chris chris was alluding to you know i i'll admit too that i i went through a, a very similar I, I feel like i still am going through through that similar process you know that's a continual process but what's mm -hmm. interesting for for me i think is that i went from that like chicago and i moved to california mm -hmm. and that like blew me away mm -hmm. just like yeah. The, the the contrast and the difference and i think that's that, that's mm -hmm. primarily what um drew me towards it but it, it also was, was very very scary <laughs> so i i recognize that there is yeah. it is a process of, of discovery mm -hmm. um but for for the people that you've interacted with what's kind of like a what's like a common thread of things that that have really like sparked that for them like what what did they not know previously that they knew and you were, they were able to see clearly and that was like mm -hmm. Wow, I had no idea that was even a part of me. Now mm. I really, now I really want to go discover that. Or dig a little mm -hmm. bit deeper. What, what's some? What are some common threads like that? You know, it's it's funny because as a as a teacher, um, educator, professor, whatever, you don't see those things until later, if mm. they come back and talk to you about it, right? So, mm. you know, one of the things that um, I'm extreme. Oh, do I have a copy? Oh shoot, it's not. In it's not in <laughs> so one of my um one of my former students i can't call her my student anymore mm. um she came to to city college after she graduated her ba and was just kind of like i'm gonna take some classes and she found philippine studies and now she publishes a filipino american newspaper you know wow. that was like the thing you know um one of my students uh finished his BA in, in sociology at Berkeley, ended up getting his master's. And then for his capstone project, he created a class for a community college. Um, and then we turned that into an actual class at City College. Wow. Um, Philippinex wow. LGBTQ plus identities and cultures. You know, so and when I think about, um, I, I, I like to, I would like to believe that I open doors um, for students to, to kind of think about these things and think about possibility and opportunity and not feel like, oh, I can't do that. You know, I, I think that that's, it's really important for students to believe that you don't have to go down, you don't always have to be a nurse. No, mm. no thing on nurses, right? Nurses Never, are super no. important. One in five nurses in California are Filipino, right? But it's 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 that thing of do we all need to be nurses? Mm. Right? Or healthcare. Um, mm -hmm. Or healthcare in general, right? right? And and if 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 healthcare is your pathway, fantastic, but is it the space where you want to be? Or is there something it's like, okay, you're a nurse practitioner. Do you want to go on and be a doctor? You know, do you see that as a possibility for you? If you're a doctor, do you want to be a specialist in some way? Do you see that open for you in some way, right? And and kind of, or even kind of think about health administration, right? Do you want to be, do you see yourself as being a manager, right? And I think for, for a lot of um, folks, there's a fear of kind of moving up and not feeling like, oh, well, I don't know. I don't know. Um, and I, I try to, my hope is always that the folks that I interact with walk away with feeling like, okay, no, I, I think I can, let, okay, let's see where this can go, you know? And um, 
I just get really happy when when I see folks doing things that they love. You know, it sounds mm -hmm. super cheesy, yeah. right? Hella cheesy to be like, you know, because people, you know, I, particularly immigrants, or, and, and mm. I understand this, right? It's like you survive. Your primary mm -hmm. goal as somebody who's coming into the space, um, you know, this this culture that is that that feels very unnatural or or unfamiliar, right? I'm just trying to survive, right? And then second generation kids come along mm -hmm. and say, I just want to be happy. Right? <laughs> like, what do you mean happy? <laughs> like, you gotta survive, right? Hey. And, and, yeah, right? And I'm yeah. just like, mm -hmm. it, it can be both and, you know? Exactly. And, 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 and you I can do that. things that you love and thrive, right? Like I think of, um, have you read Aaron and Trotta Kelly's stuff? or Randy Revi's stuff. Mm -hmm. um, Aaron and Trotta Kelly is this extremely prolific um, young adult um, author. Like, or she won the Newberry, right? Mm -hmm. and, and she's, and I'm just like blown away by her work because um, she's produced novel after novel over the last, wow. I would say, five, six years, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and then Randy Revi's work, you know, particularly thinking about you know, the experience of Filipino American men, right? Because mm. I, I find that a lot of narratives um, are really female dominated. And I'm always kind of looking for that, you know, that, that, that story of, well, how are we also uplifting and, and supporting our men, right? Because it's, um, I'm all about women empowered. Don't get me wrong, sure, right? But, sure. but but really, I'm just kind of like, how are our men kind of moving into spaces where they feel like they're they're able to do X, Y, or Z, right? And, and break out of, of 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 stereotypes of, oh, you should go into the military or whatever. Again, nothing on the military. That's how I got here. But you know, yeah. it's, <laughs> what are do you see your other options, right? Do you see that you can be you know, an educator or a, a college administrator or, you know, an engineer in, you know, in NASA or whatever, you know, it's like, do you see that? Can you see that for yourself? Um, and you don't go down the path of like, well, that's what my parents expect me to be. That's mm. what they told me to, to, to be. And sorry, parents. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, parents. We're just, I'm not a parent myself, but, I, but really I'm just kind of like, you know, if if um, if your child or your children are, um, you know, motivated enough to do a particular mm -hmm. thing, you know, encourage that. You know, I, I think of my so my I'm just doing all these like weird chat cuts. I'm sorry, but I think no, of good. Michelle Kamaya, Michelle Kamaya Julian. She's she was, um, and I think about her because she was on Broadway for a number of years doing Lion King. Um, but she started out in San Diego. She was um, she was part of the Samahan Dance Company, which my brother used to dance with too. And she's just phenomenal. She's absolutely phenomenal, and. Um, she went to Irvine too with me and I remember running into her at one point and I don't know why this memory stuck with me but she ran into uh, she she's a couple years younger than me but she we ran into each other and she's like I'm leaving I'm like why are you leaving she's like I'm gonna go be on Broadway I'm like oh my god that's amazing wow. Wow. that's amazing right yes. and Man. and uh, and she's like yeah and I, I'm gonna come back and finish my beat though I'm like why are you why are you telling me this and I'm like that's cool you know like but you do you because you're gonna be amazing doing that thing because you are just a phenomenal person and like you know like I think about there were people in her life who encouraged her to go that route versus what are you gonna do with that Oh, that's just a hobby. Do Man, that on the side. Oh my, oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. You know, just do that on the side. It's oh, okay. You know, you yeah. have to have a stable job. Yeah. You know, and stable job in the context of what they understand. Right. right? Exactly. Right? That's a good point. And, and and you can't fault that, right? You yeah. can't be angry at that. But it becomes a point of tension because mm -hmm. it's like, but what if? 
that stability makes me not feel good about who I am, what I'm doing mm. and, and, and hey. what I'm doing with my life. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be miserable. Right. It took me 10 years to get my doctorate right? <laughs> for a whole lot of different reasons. Um, but, and I was always asked like, when are you going to be done? When are you going to be done? Oh, man. Right. Mm-hmm. Are you done yet? Well, you should stop school. You have enough school. I'm like, yeah, I know I have enough school. <laughs> I know I've been here for a long time, right? But but it's it's that thing of like, but I like doing this. And yeah. it will, I I absolutely oh believed that it would work out. You know what I mean? That something will come my way that would pull me out of the debt and then the space <laughs> where I was kind of like, you know, and um, you know, my, my partner was very helpful. Um, once I moved out here, but even before then, I'm just like, I'll figure it out, you know, and, and I don't regret any decision that I made, I've made thus far in my life, because I've, every single thing that I've done has gotten me to this point, mm. you know, and, and I'm just like, I don't regret any of the community work that I've done. You know, I don't regret any of the the organizing that I engaged in. And people are like, well, you should go do, ho- go to school. Just finish school. Like, yeah, I'll be done. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get it done. Because those things were so important too. You know what I mean? Um, I, 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 I had to, to comment yeah. on this because mm-hmm. I, I didn't want to, I didn't want to lose it. Um, no, 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 you're fine. That it, like, what you, like, for whoever's listening out there, like, go back and rewind five minutes and, mm-hmm. and, and re- re-listen to that. Because, mm-hmm. like, I'm just sitting here, literally, if, you, if you're watching on YouTube, like, I'm literally just sitting here just like, Bro, like that's that's exactly right. Like mm-hmm. that five minutes five minutes ago, re-listen to that. Like that's exactly what we're trying to do here. You know, be a catalyst, be a part of the movement of change, right? That that mindset of change. Um, because yeah, there's so many people out there that we feel. I mean, I, Chris and I talk about this all the time offline. Like there's just so many people out there, even including ourselves, that have that have felt that way, right? And it wasn't until we started having conversations like this that really got us to just get up and and change that you know and, and push the boundary we always talk about like like break that ceiling that we put on ourselves or as as a whatever as a people we put on ourselves or the walls that we've 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 constructed ourselves like break those down like we don't need mm-hmm. those things and like that's why like for anyone listening out there that really wants to just grasp like what this platform is trying to do go back five minutes and just re-listen to that because that was seriously like just beautifully eloquently said and like that just like hit me in the heart and I, I literally just didn't want to lose that. So I really had to just say that. And I know that Chris had a comment too. So I just wanted to, <laughs> I just wanted to get that through. Yeah, for sure. Now I just, I just want to comment on um, how you, you talk about with parents and we're not knocking parents, but oh. I think it's just that generational difference where, like you said, mm-hmm. they came here with that sort of survivalist mindset. And mm-hmm. now uh, us, the, the newer generations understand that there's passions that we want to pursue and things that will make us happy. And in the long run, like we've made it, mom and dad, we've made it out here. Now let us pursue what something, something that we can go to bed and, and be proud of, you know what I mean? Besides providing food on the table, but it's like something that will leave my legacy. Right. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what you are doing is yes. that you, yes. you and so many other leaders, like you said, your friend who went on a Broadway. And I, when you said, when people are like, why don't you just make that like a side thing? Why don't you just make it a hobby? You hear it's that like, so no, many no. times. No, it's like, that is your calling, man. <laughs> oh, you know, just yeah. like this, yeah. you know, teaching is your calling. Leading mm-hmm. is your calling. Right. Yes. And I think of like, cause I, I used to think that way too, where it's like, mm-hmm. why are all these creatives like trying to dedicate so much time to this? Shouldn't they have a, a job first and then do the stuff on the side? And then I started think I started seeing what people, and I don't want to say like AJ Raphael. I look at AJ Raphael and how mm-hmm. he's leading yeah. also in the community, right? It's like, he is, he is the Kai of my generation because like, mm-hmm. I mean, with Kai, they had a hard time because they had to like push out music a different way, That's, you know, wow. the, before the internet was out here, right? So now that, straight up, I'm sorry. CDs out of the back of the car, let me tell you. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to age you right now, but I'm just, I'm just saying like my observation. <laughs> Hey man, CDs out of the back of a car is a real thing. What what Age Raphael did, honestly, is what's helping. Um, oh, what's her name from High School Musical? The musical. What's her name? Olivia Rodrigo. Yes, right. I feel like he's he helped uh, create that path for her. It's helping other Filipinos Mm -hmm. be discovered and being 
and putting more of their content or whatever they're passionate about out there in the world. Because most times we, we're afraid. We're afraid of what, not just what our parents will say, but other people will say. Like they might think, oh, I need to get a job before I can actually do this first. You know what I mean? But what I think is that you are creating pathways. You're opening doors, like you said. And that oh. is what is important because it's representation. It's what makes people more encouraged to pursue what they want because they see the success, right? And I kind of want to shift to what like this Philippine this Philippine study organization that you call, is that was, is that what it's called? I'm sorry. It's the Philippines um, studies department. department yes. Mm-hmm. I have, I've never heard of a school having that. Obviously it's the first in America. <laughs> yeah, How did that happen? Uh, Cause I'm, let's go there. Let's go there. You know, let's, I want to go there because it's super important because I'm pretty sure there's a yeah. lot of like prodigies for coming out of that. You know? Yeah. Well, before, before I go into that, I do want to, I, I want to emphasize to folks because I think what um, our current culture has done is really kind of makes has made things look easy, right? Mm-hmm. And I want people to understand that you know I, I, I talk about all these things. All of this was work. It's work. You right. put in the work, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and and I think that that's really important to to recognize that this is not just like oh I willed it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah right yeah. like I was very intentional about okay I'm gonna do this or, and it seemed haphazard right but um but I enjoyed the work too mm-hmm. you know you have to enjoy the work but um anyway so Philippine studies um it's 52 years old um mm-hmm. I was not there when it was born <laughs> <I'm not that laughs> <old. laughs> um, it, so and it was I have to apologize my cat might make an appearance um it's fine so <laughs> Um, it was on the, on the tail coats of the 68, 69 ethnic studies strike, which, um, Filipinos were engaged in involved with PACE out of San Francisco state was, mm-hmm. was a leading organization that was a part of that. Um, but, you know, city college is actually down the road from SFSU and, um, Philippine studies evolved in a, in a parallel kind of way where it wasn't just, um, students, but also the community, um, kind of rallying together and saying, we want Philippine studies, not necessarily Philippine mm. American studies. Mm. And um, there was also supportive administration, right? So I think at that moment, it was just the perfect moment for all of this to kind of come together because Philippine studies and African American studies were the first ethnic studies departments that were, were um, developed and established at the oh, City wow. College of San Francisco. Wow. Um, and so it's it's fascinating to me because I'm just like, but why, right? And it was mm-hmm. in this kind of confluence of the anti-martial law movement kind of emerging um, in the early 70s, um, the, the Third World Liberation Front and um, ethnic studies, but also anti-war movements, mm-hmm. all of these things, right? And so that's where it started. Right. But in terms of infrastructure, they didn't have a full time chair until the the mid 80s. And then it, there wasn't another full time chair again until the 90s, because um, the first person, um, I think they passed away. And and I'm still actually researching this this um, this history myself because I want to write about it. Um, mm, yeah. But yeah, there was you know, there was a that person passed away and then it became a part-time um, department chair thing. And, um, and then a new, new person came in they were hired full time and they were there until 2014. Um, I came in at 2014, but um, there was another kind of moment where, oh, do you, does your department really need a, a full-time chair? And I want, I want to make clear why that's important. Having full-time faculty in the department provides stability. Right. Mm. That means that there needs to be or there can be somebody there who will develop degrees and certificates Mm. and classes and things like that. That is why it's important to have a full time tenured faculty right in those spaces. And so there was I came in at 2014. I became chair in 2016 um, after quite a bit of conversation about whether or not there should be a. a, um, a full-time chair position and um you know i applied for the job i didn't just get it right mm-hmm. um and by then i'd been teaching part-time and um serving as a part-time chair um mm-hmm. you know and 
at that moment, I was also teaching at Napa Valley College at San Francisco State. Oh, wow. And, you know, wow. and so kind of thinking about like all of these things. Um, if you have somebody who's pulled into all these different places, you don't have stability, right? And so when I was hired as, um, as a full timer, I was, I, I want to say that I was, again, blessed because especially in higher education right now, it is very difficult, right? It's very difficult to find yourself in a moment where you, you get to be in a full-time position from the get, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I have friends who've been adjuncting and part-timing for years, oh, and wow. that's hard. Mm-hmm. That is really, really hard because there comes a point where you're just kind of like, I don't know if I'll ever get a full-time position because mm. there are going to be new people coming out of their, their grad programs every year who are going to be fresh and new, right? Mm. Wow. Um, but people will be like, okay, no, we're going to hire that person, yeah. you mm-hmm. know? So, um, so yeah. Um, and now I'm, you know, I'm very proud of the fact that we've been able to grow the number of courses that we offer from three to 13 um, since I became <sighs> chair. That's crazy. Um, that's yeah. crazy. Sorry, I was. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> Whether or not that wow. we're able to offer all of them at the same time, that's wow. that's another story. Yes. But we have wow. we can potentially right. We have thirteen, and part of that is because I we we took the the Filipino language program from um the the language the world languages department, um and and you know they were thinking about you know discontinuing it, and I understood why, but I was just like, can I have it? You know, so, so, you know, and, and try to kind of um, rethink how to do that and then developing new classes, right? Um, I've, I've just been really lucky um, and I don't take, um, I, I take what I do very ser- seriously as service and as a responsibility. Um, and I also know that I'm not going to be here forever, right? Mm. So it's also that thing of how do we get more folks to do this work so I don't have to do forever. <laughs> you know, <'cause>, <laughs> you know, <laughs> for real talk. <laughs> no, for real. Because the thing is, I've seen programs die yeah. because yeah. their, you know, their founders go. Yeah. You know, and I'm just like, oh no, 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 no. You know, because they, you know, I was actually on the chopping block a couple of years ago for my job. Um, and it was because of the community um rallying and and signing petitions and and talking at the board of trustees who are just like you cannot fire dr belly raza da, 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 you know what i mean and i'm just like mm-hmm. you know and and the the letter of support went around the world and and i'm and i'm not saying that to be like oh look me I, i'm saying that to say look at the the support that this department has Damn. and what people mm. understand about the importance of having a department like this is you know around the world and i'm just like woo yeah. huge responsibility right but yeah. but I, I i do that work with joy um and i i work with my students every day with with um with so much just excitement you know cuz i can see there's a thing that you look for when you're a teacher and it's that aha moment. It's like, mm-hmm. right. I mm. You know, and, and I live for those moments. I live for the, cause this was like, Oh, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> I can dance, you know? And that's what I actually do. I can actually do that. <laughs> my, my students are just like, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, bye. <laughs> I'm totally fine. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's but, but that's yeah. oh, that's so crazy. Yeah. I I love that. I mean, I I have to ask. Or I'm like just compelled to ask. Like, you know, what's what's the vision for for this? Like, what is because there? I I know it's in there. And I know it's like probably even bigger than you probably can articulate. You know, but like, what is? Yeah, I just want to. I just want a piece of that. Like, what to describe that? Like, what does that look like? Because because you know, like as a community, like you said, communities rally, right? Mm-hmm. And like we want to be part of of that you know like we want, what does that even look like just give us a piece of a taste of, of what the vision looks like for you so what i'm doing right now and i resisted this for a very long time um is i'm trying to ensure that our degree 
in Philippine Studies, our Associate's Degree in Philippine Studies, our Certificate of Achievement in Philippine Studies, and um, our Certificate in Filipino is actually available online. And no. by doing that, it is available for now across the state, right? Because mm, okay. there are articulations across state lines that, that you know, whatever. But the, the other part of this is, um, you know, because not every, not every um, community college will be able to support a program like this, right? But how do we honor those different community colleges? Because there's always this fight for enrollment, et cetera, et cetera. And so I'm trying to figure out how to partner with other schools and say, okay, so what classes do you have? And how can we say, okay, yeah, they're taking these classes at your, your school, but they want to finish the certificate, but they'll still get an AA at your school, you know, and, and kind of do it in that way. And those are kind of very, I'm still trying to figure out how to do all of that, but I've had people mm -hmm. who are like, um, you know, oh, we want to develop a, you know, a Filipino history class or Filipino this, this or that class at, at our institution. I'm like, what's your demographics? And not, I'm not saying that only Filipinos take these classes because I don't only have Filipinos in my class, right? But I do know that that is the base. So I'll just okay. be real, right? right, right. Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. so when I ask folks like, okay, well, do you have enough folks who you can enroll in your class in this this potential class um, for several semesters so that it is sustainable and so that you can build momentum at your institution to support it right um, and then if that's you know not that if that's not the case but like if there are barriers or whatever it's like okay well how can we work across institution then to support mm. our students' needs and our students' interests. Because we always talk about, we are a student-centered institution. We, we, we listen to our students. We want you to, to develop things that our students want. But that's not all. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know so it's like, okay, the, my, my idea of student-centered is, okay, let's open it up. Mm. Let's just open it up. But let's open it up understanding that there are other institutions engaged and involved and figure out how we can do this amicably so that we're all supporting each other in this process and not fighting each other for mm. enrollment right so that's kind of the the statewide kind of thing but on the uh, on on the other side of that too is like i am i want to support other folks who are doing similar work anywhere in the world right mm. so so there's this really great project that that was spearheaded by high school students in Hawaii um and they were able to um get the 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 school district to say okay we will offer a Filipino American studies course and they've wow. been developing it wow they've been developing wow. it and so now this the teachers have come in to um to develop to help them develop kind of the 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 academic language and talking about like student learning outcomes and you know the the kind of the language that is necessary for the bureau bureaucracy of it right mm. and i was able to to see them work and i was just like this is beautiful yeah. this is so this because it's it's not it's not teachers telling students what to do Mm -hmm. right it's students saying this is what we want this is what we figured out and then the teacher saying okay here's how we need to rephrase this for the language of the law the language of the education code da, 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 da. and they're like okay okay you know and so it's it's a it's an engaged dialogue where people are respecting where they are coming from and i'm just like wow. shout out to, to wow. patricia halagal and her daughter oh. who are, oh, who are and all the wow. students who are doing this work Right, because I'm Marissa, Marissa, because it's 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 amazing, you know, because that's what I imagine education should be. Right, if mm. we're truly talking about student centered, right, it's that thing of what are students doing to be empowered to be advocates of their learning, and how mm. are we as educators supporting that, 
right? Wow. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what would my education in you know, a space look like if it was, was that? Versus, yeah. Oh, I'm going to wow. sit here and listen to you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? For an hour and then I'm going to go. You know? Because wow. because it's, it's that thing of lifelong learning. Right? It can mm-hmm. be anything. Yeah. Right? It can be anything. But I, and I tell this to my, um, I teach immigrants in U.S. history. I tell my students, like, you will walk out of this class not remembering 80, 85% of the things that, of the facts and timelines and blah, blah, blah. What I want you to walk away with is curiosity. I want you to walk away with the desire to want to learn more. And the ability (laughs) to connect all of this with what you're doing now, right? Because because I've found that a lot of students coming out of high school are very fearful of being wrong. And mm. I, I'm, I'm just like, it's okay to be wrong. Mm-hmm. It's okay not to get an A. It's, it's okay to say what you have to say and then figure out how to rephrase it, right? And do it in a way where it's like, not punitive, you know, and, and it's, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Education, education right now is just a whole thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, I want my students to not be afraid of being wrong, you know, cause they're, it's, it makes, it makes me sad to yeah. think that they're, that they feel like they always have to be right. And I'm like, dude, you're learning. Like, mm. Really? Like I'm not yeah. always right. <laughs> okay. and, that, we go there? and that translates to the work environment because mm-hmm. when you're, mm-hmm. you know, in the work environment, you're afraid to make mistakes. You're afraid to yes. make a decision that will have some kind of consequence. You know, yeah. because we always learn that if you're wrong, then it's a failure. So yeah. I think starting off as a student, understanding you can make these mistakes, and that's not going to impact you the rest of your life. You're uh, more encouraged to make decisions and stand by decisions, right? Yes. Um. <laughs> And I want to be respectful of your time. And oh, I do want to ask the question that I think will hopefully give our audience that aha moment that you like. Mm-hmm. Also give people that curiosity to learn more. Mm-hmm. And that question mm-hmm. is, mm-hmm. since we're still, we're about to wrap up October. Mm-hmm. What, why? Which is, we, which is why? Filipino American <laughs> History Month. And that's exactly what question I had for you. Why is it Amer- Filipino American History Month and not Filipino American Heritage Month? Oh, Sorry, that was a teacher moment. Yeah. Was that my aha moment? Or- <laughs> Chris just had it. I, I witnessed it. I witnessed it. <laughs> oh, so, sorry. Yeah, I've been doing this all month when I see um, social media posts. I'm like slipping to people's DMs. Yeah. Hey, hey. Like, so let's I totally have a believe you. Short I know conversation you about that. <laughs> no. But and I'm just I'm going to read something because I uh, Dr. Don Baholana Mabalon, who was the previous um, national scholar for the Filipino American National Historical Society. Um, I think she said it best and she it's on a Facebook post because <laughs> and I'm just like, you know what, I can't do better than this. But she said, um, you know, it, history is inclusive of history and culture, but it's also the stories of how we changed this nation mm-hmm. and ourselves in this process, our political stru- struggles, transformations, labor, migration, activism, impact of imperials and war, victories, etc. Whereas heritage is more limited to what we pass down in terms of culture, tradition, and legacies. We've made history, we've helped build this nation. And that's what this month is about. And that is directly from Don Baholana Mobala on October 2, 2013, um, a post that many of us have been reposting um, the last the last month or so. Um, she sadly, and we miss her dearly, she passed away in 2018. And, um, but she it has been such a force um, in Filipino American, amongst Filipino American educators particularly, but I think, um, has reverberated in so many different ways. Um, her impact is felt. Um, they just named a part of um, Delta College's um, 
one of the arenas there, I'm sorry, I can't remember, but they just named it after her because she was an alum of a community college and she went on to UCLA um, and then Stanford to get her PhD. They, they believe that she was the first P9 to get a PhD in history from Stanford. And, um, you know, she, yeah, she, she was amazing. Um, and she continues to be, but yeah. that is the difference, right? Um, and if I if I could add to that a little bit too, we we tend to think about heritage as things that are very tangible and static. When we think about food, think about costuming, we think about dances, et cetera. Et cetera. And it harkens back to when I say static, things that we remember about the Philippines, right? History is something that is ongoing and constantly changing, and that we're experiencing on a daily basis. Um, and so, yeah, yeah. And and heritage is important, right? Mm -hmm. but it's really that like that surface thing it's like oh lupia is great <laughs> no mm -hmm. <laughs> ube is a thing right i was just yeah. watching the great british bake-off last season and one of the uh, one of the contestants used um ube in their donuts i'm just like okay okay diaspora from <laughs> now in, in great britain you go and use ube right? <laughs> you know yeah, you're good. <laughs> wow. Man. So sorry. <laughs> no, I love that. That was like the perfect way to answer that and hopefully yeah. sparks people interest to learn more about that differentiation, you know, and it's very, very important, you know, and that, when I learned that and I did my studies and became more interested of this month, I, it, I took it more seriously, to be honest. And I, I apologize that um, the doctor, professor, you mentioned the, the quote that you had read. You, it's funny. I was when I, as I was doing my research and learning more, I kept finding articles, you know, of of, of what she wrote and yeah, just her interviews. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. man, I gotta get, we gotta get her on this podcast. Yeah. And then I learned that she passed. she passed. And the fact that you brought her up and you shared that quote, I think you honor her today. And yeah. I'm so glad that we have you on here today. Yes, and I, I, yes, yeah. yes. She yes. she is always with us. Like it, it's yeah. it's funny because I think about that a lot um, when she passed and and um during her funeral there were, it was just overflow it was amazing like the number of people there and, and not just you know i mean she was well loved and and, and well respected across the nation and so it, it was just it was mind-blowing right her, mm. the, the reach you know if you ever get a moment to read her um her jack rabbit adobo um article or or chapter in eating asian america it's really really good mm. um but even more important is her um you know what is it sorry little manila is in the heart um mm. book which is the story of stockton um okay. which you know that's that, that's a really seminal text i would argue for filipino american history so man yeah. dropping knowledge I know. so many things uh, i gotta read yeah. after this conversation <laughs> oh, I, I can oh. i can send you a list but like yeah, so please, here's, please here's do. the thing, here's please the thing do. that i wanted to share please. with you guys and this just came out i don't know if you'll be able to see it but it's oh, wow. the encyclopedia oh. of filipina no american studies what it is where do i get this <laughs> It's two what? volumes. It's two volumes. Um, editors are Dr. Kevin Nadal, Dr. Dr. Ate, Ate Dr. <laughs> Alison Tinchanko Cobales, and Dr. EJR David. And all three of those people are just, <laughs> I don't even know. They're like powerhouses in Filipino American studies in general, right? And and there are other, there's so many others um, who, who also kind of live in that space, but just so excited for this. Right. Cause I don't know if you remember when when you were young or if this happened when you were young. <laughs> My parents had a, an encyclopedia set, right? They bought, you know, they 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 invested in it. They're like, yeah. okay, here's your thing. This was our Google. Right. Mm. This is our Google. And yes, it, it aged every year because it's paper. Right? But like to think about the fact that we had that in hand, it's like, oh, I want to know about Richard Nixon. Then <laughs> 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 I can go look it up. In the, right. I wanted to know about the, I don't know, the create creatus, creatus, whatever. <laughs> a period of dinosaurs or whatever. Like I can go look that up. Uh -huh. Right. And it's, um, to know that there is an encyclopedia of 
our experiences, wow. our histories, That's our so heritages. Cool. It is, you know, um, out there now. Like this is what it's about in terms of m- making our mark and making us visible. Mm-hmm. You know, and again, I was so very, you know, blessed to to come up in this space or this time when so many of these folks who are who are you know, pushing out scholarship now, we're, we're just kind of, you know, get, you know, grounding themselves. And, I, I, you know, I think about Joanne Rondilia, and I think about Theo Gonzalez, and I think about Kevin, you know, and, and Allison, and, and EJ, and, you know, Robin Rodriguez, and I'm just like, damn, just damn, you know, the, mm. the work that, that's been, that, that has been cranked out in the last 20, 30 years. The people who come after us, I, I want y'all to understand that this has been the work that you will mm-hmm. gain from, mm. but don't take it for granted. You yeah. still got to do the work too. You know, mm. yeah. the, you know this is only two volumes. You have, <laughs> you have to make it longer. <laughs> I, I, I love that. I love that. So, I mean, to, to so, kind of just, um, we wanted to share that is, first of all, that is awesome. I like was, oh, I was I need that. like shook it. Like when I Me saw too. that, <laughs> I was Yo. like, what? I, I, I honestly, that was, I did not think that that was going to be the surprise. I was like, that is crazy. But we also want to, you know, we want to give people, the listeners, an opportunity to like learn more about you, you know, learn more about the work that you're doing. Like, you know, so for people that listen to this conversation and they're just like, man, like that is something, someone that speaks to me. That is something that, that's a movement that speaks to me. This is something that's like, you know, it's, it's bridging curiosity for me, you know, like where, where can they learn more about you and, and connect with you? And just, yeah, like we want to give you an opportunity to share that as well, because you just added so much valuable or value to this space Mm -hmm. that um, we, we're honored to be able to do this. Oh, um, I guess you can. <laughs> um, my email. <laughs> hey, that's how I found you. Remember, I email. <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> Don't fall on your chair, David. <laughs> my email. <laughs> so, that was perfect. Yeah. <laughs> so L V I L L A R A. Z A at ccsf.edu. I'm also on Instagram, um, Philippine Studies CCSF. Um, and then you know, Facebook, you can we also have a page for the department. Um, you can also find yeah. me like individually <laughs> on Facebook as well. I tend to not add people who I don't know, just uh, you know, but I do have kind of a, a public facing, I have public facing posts and things like that. Um, I am on Twitter, but I haven't figured out how to best use Twitter. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I'd like to think that, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm available to folks to, to engage in these conversations. Um, and yeah, you can find me on the CCSF website too, but um, it might be a bit complicated. If, yeah, I it might be you. easier to search <laughs> Philippine Studies CCSF hmm. and Google that. And yeah, you can find me that way too. But, but yeah, I mean, I don't, there are so many other people who are doing amazingly phenomenal things, you know, and who've been there before me, who will come after me. Um, I'm just along for the ride. And I just pray that I'm doing right by my ancestors and the folks who've come before me. Um, And that I am, you know, everything that I do is, honoring that legacy so. yeah yeah oh so so perfectly put so perfectly put 